Got a quick video for you guys today. I'm gonna to talk about how to write similes like a pro. By the way, my name's Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. Today we're gonna to talk about similes and what these are, in case you're not familiar with them. Similes are comparisons that use the words like or as. These comparisons, they connect two different ideas. And when you connect ideas like that, when you bridge the gap between two different ideas, it makes your writing more creative and exciting, and it ultimately enhances the reader's understanding of your story. Now, what we're going to talk about in today's video, I'm going to talk about what the purpose of a simile is, I'm going to talk about what makes a good simile, and then I'm going to give you some examples to illustrate those good similes. Now, the first thing I want to talk about right up front is what is the purpose of a simile? Why would you want to use one in your story? And there are many reasons, but I never narrowed it down to three particular reasons for this video. And the first thing similes do, they make your writing vivid. Anytime you take two different ideas and you compare them, you draw fresh perspectives on those ideas. The second thing that similes do, they make your writing accessible. And they do this by simplifying complex ideas or by enhancing our understanding of simpler ones. And the third thing a simile does, it expresses emotions, oftentimes surprising emotions. You can change the mood in a scene or you can paint a setting or an, or an object or a person in a certain light, a certain emotional light, if you use an effective simile. And I'll give you an example right here of a simile that is vivid, accessible, and emotional. I'm going to write a sentence. The first sentence here is not going to include a simile, and then I'm going to rewrite it including a simile. So here's our first sentence. The sun glared down, high and oppressive, above our heads. And that's not a bad sentence. It gets the idea across. That's a pretty decent image. But we can do better if we include a strong simile. So here's the rewrite. The sun glared down like the eye of an angry Roman god. So that simile that like the eye of an angry Roman god. It's vivid. It leaps right off the page and into your mind. It's accessible. It draws us into the story. We can feel like that sun is looking down on us. And it's emotional. We get that anger, that, that, that look from the, the Roman god. We can almost see the eye of the sun staring down on the people in this story. And that's an effective simile. That's something that could potentially make your story stronger. Now let's talk about what makes for a good simile. And there are a number of different things that can apply here, but I'm going to narrow it down to three particular things. The first thing is clarity. And clarity is critical in your writing in any area of your writing, especially with similes though, because if you have a simile that is way too over the top or it gets confusing, it defeats the whole purpose of having a simile in the first place because you're supposed to be connecting ideas. You're supposed to be making things more accessible for your reader. So you need your simile to be clear and effective and to the point. The second thing that makes a good simile is specificity. And specificity is very important because if you have something that's more specific, it will have more impact. And when you really want these, these similes to leap off the page, you need to get specific with your details. And then the third thing that makes a good simile is the character's point of view. And this is where your creativity comes in. You, you, different characters are going to come from different backgrounds. They're going to have different ways of perceiving the world. And how those characters perceive the world will often determine what kind of similes you can use in your story. Now let's take a look at some examples. I have an example that illustrates each of these three different things I just talked about the clarity, specificity, and the character point of view. So the first example is from a Stephen King novel. I'm not going to say which one because I don't want to spoil it. It's a kind of a major moment in the story, uh, but it's about a guy who's in a pretty rough scenario and someone just attacks him with an axe and they, that person tries to cut his foot off. And as soon as he's hit with that axe, he starts to wiggle his leg and tries to break free and it only makes things worse. And here's the line that comes up in the story. All he was doing was widening the axe slash, making it open like a mouth. And that's a great example of a simile that uses clarity because like a mouth is simple. It's to the point. It's only three words, but it helps paint the image of an open wound. When someone gets hit with an axe, we might not be able to picture what that wound looks like. But when you use a simple simile like like a mouth, we know what an open mouth looks like. So that instantly leaps into our minds and it paints the image of what this guy is going through. And it's pretty horrific stuff. Now let's take a look at another example, and this one focuses on specificity. And it's from the novel A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. I was recently listening to the audiobook for this one, and one of the similes in this book really leaped out at me because of how specific it was. And it's not too specific, it's not over the top, but I'll read it for you right now. The thought slid like a cold shining rapier into his tender flesh. Confession. So 
that simile right there, like a cold shining rapier into his tender flesh, it really, you can really feel it because of how specific it is. A rapier is of course a sword with a very thin blade and it's it's used to pierce flesh. And the idea of a cold shining rapier, you could really, you could see it, you could feel it. It's just, ooh. And I want to point out that you could have written this sentence with, um, like a sword into his flesh. I mean, that would have worked, but the specific details, a cold shining rapier into his tender flesh, it's just so striking and it works because of how specific it is. And then here's one more example, and this one deals with character point of view. It's from Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill, and this is a novel about a retired rock star. He buys a ghost off the internet, and this ghost is haunting a, a dead man's suit. So uh, the rock star, he buys this suit, it arrives in the mail one day, and here's the the description of the suit as it's coming out of the box. The suit was somber, as dark as a crow's feathers, but those buttons the size of quarters gave it something of a rustic character. So that line, as dark as crow feathers, this guy's a retired rock star. He's like an Ozzy Osbourne type of guy. So a line like as dark as crow's feathers, that really fits his character and that fits his point of view. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what's your favorite simile that you've ever come across in a novel? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. And as always, remember to keep on writing.